And we're back with another What the Hell episode. Uh, this is a What the Hell Rewind from last month. And we like to go through some stuff and see what the hell is going on. And what the hell? <laughs> How are you doing, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I think don't I know I'm coffee. <laughs> I'm still sipping on my gin and juice. Laid back. Okay. I don't know how this is going to make you feel, but when I first saw this thing, I'm like, what the hell is this? I, 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 and I know with, with good old YouTube, there's all kinds of ways to make all types of money. So okay. I wanted to start is start this off with that highest paid female YouTuber of 2021 is seven years old. And she made twenty eight million. Highest paid female YouTuber. So this is just based off. This one looks like he's flipping her off. <laughs> um. So we know like kids stuff here sometimes blows up insane. Like just sometimes it's just insane how it goes. But just reading this thing. Most kids are lucky to collect a few dollars a week for doing chores. This young lady, $28 million for making videos about decorating Halloween cupcakes. <laughs> And learning to tell time. How crazy. How, how does that make you feel? Like, I think we're in the wrong business. <laughs> what is YouTube now? <laughs> like, what is it? Like, we were just discussing before we hit record how some of the creators that we follow. I guess we're boomers now. I guess they're not getting views anymore. Not like they used to. And then we see stuff like this of a seven year old decorating a cupcake, making $28 million a year. What? Dude. So she's seven years old, right? She was in the Forbes ratings dropping it's funny. Drop. She dropped apparently to number seven in 2020. Then rising one spot to number six for 2021. As reported by the business magazine. Uh, last year. Uh, she sold her rights to her old YouTube videos to spotter for cash up front while retaining rights to new content. So she sold all her old videos to a different company. And she is also introducing a merchandise line. Of course she is. And of course she doesn't have one already. And you're gonna like this one though. NFT collection. Of course. Of course. <laughs> why not? Who are you if you were not with the size of the following she has? Why would you not have an NFT connect? That's I don't understand what YouTube is anymore. Like, is there a place that we can have that plays well with grown up content? I'm trying <laughs> not to like, I, I don't mean that in an offensive way. I don't. I just, it feels like YouTube is now meant for the younger generation. And maybe us boomers need a, a, a boomer tube or something a boob tube <laughs> not a boob tube a boom tube a boom a boom tube <laughs> <laughs> so uh top five earning creators for 2021 this is just youtube this isn't like i know there's a lot of other youtubers out there that also make a lot of money on youtube and they have affiliates and they make tons of money on that way too but this is just this is YouTube saying here's a check. That's it. Just YouTube. So 
filling out Forbes catalog on top earning creators of last year, Mr. Beast, 54 million, Jake Paul, 45 million, Mark Mark Plyer, 38 Mark million. Plier, yeah. Rhett and Link, mm-hmm. 30 million. Unspeakable, 28 million. Ryan Kaji, 27 million. It, dude, it's just, it's ridiculous. And she's the only female on this list. Yeah, but she's seven years old. <laughs> that makes you angry, doesn't it? It's just, it's very good for her. I'm happy for her. <laughs> very nice. You did very good. You did very good, young one. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. When I see these numbers, it's it's insane. Like it's it, I don't know. Like it, it's 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 literally insane. Oh, Logan Paul's on this list too, by the way. So, what does Mr. Beast do? Like him being the number one. most earning is creator on YouTube. What does he do on his, on his channel? Anyway, do you never watch any of his stuff? No, not that guy. Have you watched squid games? Oh yes. He's the one that did the, his version of it. Yeah. But he spent like 2 million on that one YouTube video. Didn't he also get sponsored by somebody and probably he makes all kinds of cash and does all kinds of shit. I don't know exactly what it is. I, and he, you know what? He also did a. Now that I remember, not, not now that now that you put that in my head, I remember watching him do a, where he rented out a football stadium. I think it was where the Rams, the LA Rams play, and he grabbed like ten popular creators, either on TikTok or on YouTube. And what they did was like they played hide and go seek. And whoever was the winner at the end, I got a donation to whatever charity they want or something like that. Um, it was it's like 50% to that and then 50% to however they want. And I think they were all gonna give it away to their subscribers. Something nuts, but okay. So Jake Paul and Jake Paul is number two. And number eight is Logan Paul. If I'm counting this right. Number eight. What what do those those two guys just do reaction stuff, don't they? I have no idea. I've never watched any of the Paul stuff. I thought they got canceled. I thought they got canceled because of something bad that they did. And I thought they got their channels taken away. I thought so, too. But I think that's only the. I thought that was only Logan. I don't know about Jake. I don't know. I guess he got his channel back. Uh, Mar- Mark Mark Plyer? Who's Mark that? Plyer. Mark Plyer, I think he does like video game stuff, but I don't know this. I could be wrong. I've never actually watched any of his videos. Okay. I know you watch Rhett and Link. I do watch Rhett and Link. They're like um, my white noise sometimes when I just need to like vegetate my brain. Vegetate? <laughs> yeah, I need to vegetate my brain kind of like, like just, just, you know not do anything i'll throw on some of their stuff and they got like you know the top five burgers or like they'll put things like frozen versus fresh or um pick the best burger that you like out of this lineup and we'll see if you're a fancy pants that only likes expensive stuff or um i don't know just random little shit that is kind of cool you know it's interesting because when I've seen these episodes like where they do, like you said, like the fanciest top five burgers or, or these are five burgers. One's really fancy. One's really cheap. Mm-hmm. Which one do you like the most? I, I, I also like some of that stuff. Cause I think it's very interesting, you know, to see people's reactions. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, can you really tell the difference between an expensive burger and a cheap burger? Um, just interesting stuff. So the other ones I've never heard of unspeakable. Ryan Kaji or or Dude Perfect. Dude Perfect I've heard of. I think he's a gamer. Another gamer? 
Yeah, about- isn't he sponsored by Rocket? Dude, perfect. Hold on. Dude. Dude, perfect. Is he? That'll be interesting if he is. No, I don't know. Doesn't look like the guy I thought of. The okay, so number nine came out to Preston Ars Arsment. Have you heard of that one? Nope. So anybody out there listening to us, let us know what you guys think. Um, have, which ones have you heard? Which ones do you like? I've I've heard of some of these. I haven't heard of some of these other ones, but be interesting to hear. Uh, what do you guys think? It's crazy. Number nine, Preston. I didn't mention him earlier, but Preston Arsman made 16 million. It's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Okay. Um wanted to show you this to see how you feel about this. And this has been so as you know, I actually I actually live next to to Disney, like, well, not next to Disney, but I'm pretty close to Disney, right? Disney guests attempting to sell popcorn buckets. And we're talking about, like, thousands of dollars for a popcorn bucket. Why? I don't know. But this is the bucket. It looks like a dragon. It has a little lanyard that you could put over your head. You open it up, open the head up, and there's the popcorn in there. The line is supposed to be stupid, ridiculous to get this thing also. (laughs) So it's supposed to be this limited edition figment popcorn bucket. And every year, Epcot in Florida has this uh, Festival of the Arts. And they sell, like, exclusive Disney pins, wines, cheeses, popcorn buckets, apparently. It's very exclusive on some of the stuff that they have during this very short time of the year. Um, But look at this line. Okay, so here's a video. Look at the line. It goes stupid, every, and this guy's like fat. If for people who are not watching, look how fast this thing goes. It's insanely fast. It took about eight seconds. I don't even know what is this. Uh, five bucks for the popcorn. Fifteen bucks for the. Is it fifteen or twenty-five bucks? I can't tell. It's a little blurry at the end there, um, on the price of that popcorn. But yeah, for for you guys who can't watch it. They start the line outside and it goes in and he's going in fast mode. Like he's probably going like times 10 speed and the line is just going forever. (laughs) That's ridiculous. Oh, look, it's 40 minutes to get your popcorn. Why? What makes it so special? I have no idea. It's going, it's selling on eBay for $270. This Maybe some because people collect them and they can't actually physically make it out to Disney to get them. There's a lot of stuff that they do that a lot of people can't make it to Disney and get them. To get anything like pins and stuff like that. But. Dude, we're literally talking about a popcorn bucket. That looks like a little dragon. It's called figment, I guess. I don't understand. I don't understand any of this stuff. I don't understand <laughs> how and why somebody... I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it's more complicated than this, but is decorating cupcakes making $28 million a year and why people are fighting over popcorn at Disneyland. <laughs> it's a what the hell? <laughs> I, like, I don't, I don't understand any of this. It is a what the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. So, hold on. <laughs> I have one for you. Oh, shit. Here we go. <laughs> I literally just... It happened to scroll past my screen here. And I literally just stopped at the headline. But this is amazing. FedEx 
wants to equip cargo aircraft with anti missiles lasers. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> You know, like, hold on. I got to read that again. But I have to, I, but when I actually got to the very end of that sentence, you realize where you were going. I was, I was, I almost sounded like freaking Dr. Evil from Austin Powers, the anti lasers. It's ridiculous. So we're going to have FedEx airplanes that are going to have lasers that can stop them from being hit with okay what precedent needs to be set for them to say we need to stop missiles from hitting our aircrafts china (laughs) (laughs) they're like oh you want you don't want us to send you goods fine we blow your fedex (laughs) that is oh this must be tied into that because we did an episode recently where china was coming after canada for mailing them the the decepticon virus yeah and, and then this must be a canadian fedex flight going to china oh man uh equipped with upcoming fleet the airbus a321-200 aircraft with an anti-missile laser system the proposed hardware will disrupt the tracking on heat-seeking missiles not just any missiles they're being hit with they're being hit with heat-seeking missiles by steering infrared lasers energy toward the oncoming projectile the courier service pointed to several foreign incidents where attackers used portable air defense systems against civilian aircrafts. Dude, it says right there, NBC pointed to Iran shooting down an Ukrain- a Ukrainian airline back in, t- in January of 2020, reportedly due to mistaking the jet for a cruise missile. How do you, how do you mistake it? That must be a huge freaking missile. And a Malaysian flight brought down by a Russia backed Ukrainian, you do Ukrainians in the news, man, separated uh, uh, separate separatists in July of 2014. What the hell is going on with the Ukraine? Okay, but let's be real though. This is two different events that happened in like six to seven years apart. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but that's still six to like how many pl- flights have happened since 2014? And you're like, you're just saying, oh, th- these two things happened in the last seven years. That's like me saying, I, I, I want to attach paintball guns to my car because pedestrians punch my car i don't know it's just (laughs) i don't know i don't know i don't know how i feel about any of this stuff i guess i guess what we're trying to say at this point is that every aircraft should now be equipped with anti-missile deterrence well that's the argument no because the argument here is these things these events happened these these events they're quoting, they're happening against civilian aircrafts. So then every aircraft at this point needs to have anti missile laser heat seeking deterrence. <laughs> because the, the are, these these incidents are not specifically against postal services, right? Right. So then the argument is, uh, so I guess. FedEx is setting the precedent saying that we're going to do it and everyone else is going to do it after us because apparently they take more care of the mail than the airlines do of people. (laughs) You know, it's it's scary because there's a lot of flights that go on on a daily. That's what I'm saying. So how do you pick and choose when somebody goes through your airspace and say, I'm going to, I'm going to blow you up. And you know what? Here's a little history lesson for you guys. When, I don't know, over a hundred years ago, before airplanes were really an airplane. If you guys didn't know what used to happen. And I think this was in Germany and in France. Uh, 
uh, before world it might have been before world war one i'm pretty sure it was before world war because because aircraft war didn't happen really until world war ii but i think it, it existed in world war one right before world war one happened um this is actually like a true story that i that i that one of our when i was in the military that i heard somebody else say um the germans got in their hot air balloon and were floating over into france Fran the french got into their hot air balloon and floated into germany and you know what they were doing it's a like clash of clans it was like clash of clans they were going like this hi they're just saying hello and they were going over to the other side of the country float to look at what they were doing and they would come back and then they would wave goodbye to the other person they were literally just going to spy and and they they left each other alone as the air balloons were going back and forth the second go around when they came over and i don't want to point fingers that the germans did it first or the french did it first i'm not pointing fingers at who started it but when they were coming back one of them decided to throw a rock to hit the other person on the way back they decided to throw whatever they had in their balloon back at the other person <laughs> And then the third time going around, they had a little bit of a distance. They were throwing spheres at each other, <laughs> trying to pop the other person's balloon. <laughs> Next thing you know, they started to put, they started to mount stuff on it so they could shoot stuff. And that's literally how, how air warfare started <laughs> like what the hell <laughs> like now we're looking at oh we're going to be shipping our fedex stuff and we're going to throw and we're going to put these air seeking missiles just in case dude it's 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 it's, <laughs> it's just getting bad it's getting like history is repeating itself but in a much insanely big scale now you know Oh, so I'm going to throw this out and I know you're going to love this one. For you guys who don't know, Radio Shack is coming back. As a crypto company. <laughs> I don't understand. Radio Shack. This this was a what? <laughs> like, wait a minute. What? Like none of that that title makes any sense to me. Radio <laughs> Shack coming back for what? Try to compete with Best Buy. Oh, we're not gonna compete. We're just gonna be a crypto company now. I don't like this. Still doesn't make any. You had nothing to do with anything about crypto because crypto, like what, like how? So, according to this, it looks as Radio Shack is planning to launch its own radio token. Oh my god. <laughs> and we'll start focusing on swaps, which is basically a service to exchange cryptocurrencies or aka tokens. It's you know, like Coinbase or whatever, Uniswap, you know. Documents are available on the Radio Shack's website. Th their website's back up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're back, guys. Describe this as low hanging fruit. Okay. How does this make you feel? <laughs> I don't care. That's what they want to do because I feel like a lot of companies are going to get into this. My problem is why reuse the Radio Shack name? Why? And it's funny that you say that because here, if you remember, Radio Shack brand was acquired by retail e-commerce ventures. 
back in 2020. Why are they coming up with this name? I they, don't know. They could have even just, they called it Crypto Shack. I don't give a shit. <laughs> they literally could have called it Crypto Shack and, or DeFi Shack or something and forgot the whole Radio Shack stuff. Like, who, who, oh my God. They're, they're hurting my head at this point. Because, okay, say we're sitting around the marketing table, right? <laughs> Who 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 are we marketing this company to right now? Who the hell remembers Radio Shack? Actually, that's a great question. Anybody out there <laughs> listening or watching, leave us a comment. Right. Do you remember Radio Shack? And part two to that question is because there's going to be maybe some of the younger generation. Oh man, I feel like I'm aging the crap out of I'm myself. I'm old as shit and I accept it now. That's why I'm saying who remembers Radio Shot? I do. So I'm just going to say this. Like there's going to be like your kid that might say, oh, I remember hearing about Radio Shack. Okay. No, if I pull him into the room right now and ask him what radio, he wouldn't even know. <laughs> He'll Nothing. be like, what? So, okay. Those of you who said, oh, I remember my mom or dad or whoever talking about Radio Shack. Um, how do you, do you, how do I ask this? Have you ever walked into a radio shack right. is my next question. <laughs> yeah. I walked into the radio shack before I went to the blockbuster. Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> they were right next to each other. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you, but like it. Okay. Hold on. The only, I'm probably going to get canceled for this shit, but the only way this makes sense <laughs> is if they're trying to make crypto make sense to the older generation but it doesn't make sense to me because crypto is a new generational thing you should be focusing on younger blood right older generational people will take a lot more effort to get them into something like crypto because you got to teach them like everything about the internet <laughs> you know what i mean like I, I don't get what the is there What's what, what are they doing? What are you trying to do by carrying the Radio Shack? Name? If there was some kind of like iconic movement that never stopped, even though the company went away. OK, because that's going to drive traffic. But nobody gave a shit about Radio Shack that went away. Who do we still have? The source. The source is still around. I think you guys call it something else over there. Um, Circuit City something. Oh, we don't have that no more. That That's. Circuit City has been long <laughs> gone. That they were gone before Radio Shack, bro. Okay, shit. Well, I don't know. There's something somebody like we still have the source here, which to me is like a Radio Shack. And like every time I go in there, there's nobody there. Nobody. I'll it's go like Black Circuit Friday, City. first thing in the morning. Nobody's in there. I'm like, okay, I don't know how you're still in business. No idea. Dude, Circuit City was dope back in the day, man. <laughs> that place was dope, man. Dude. I don't, I don't I, understand I, the name. I don't like. I don't understand. You know, uh, Shack. Shack token is catchy. Radio Shack. It's kind of like Radio Shack token or Radio. Sh I don't know what the hell they're gonna call it, but Radio. It's like, dude. Okay, <laughs> you have to educate what a radio is. Because now we got satellite radio. Well, it's not really like the old school radios anymore. Like, and everything's streaming. Everything's streaming. Everything is streaming. We got four G, five G in cars now. Like, you're you're coming. You're re coming out with a company that has dated technology in the name. <laughs> and you want to do the next gen e commerce? I don't. I like. I none of this makes any sense to me, and it bothers me. Radio Shack is back. Radio, oh, man, um, I don't know what to say, but I want more coffee. More coffee? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to say I'm excited or if I'm <laughs> confused or <laughs> it's it's uh, I don't know, man. It's 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 crazy, but. I got I got one more. Well, I got two more, but I got one more before we jump onto yours. Um, that has to do with the crypto stuff. But before I 
start this new one with this whole thing about Radio Shack. I really hope it's not called Radio Shack token or RSC. <laughs> like, I hope they come up with something. If they want to, if they want to say, hey, this is the radio token or this is the shack token or whatever it is, I hope they have like a really good roadmap. I hope they have a good white paper. I hope they have something that's really like give what, me something. What could they possibly try and about. solve? What what could they possibly be trying to solve? What were they selling before? They they, they were selling like tech related stuff, but it wasn't like a big sport. Oh yeah, it was like tech knickknacks, like shit that you might see on like. <laughs> they oh they have you cussing. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm done. I'm done. Just just done. <laughs> You're like I'm just done. Well, Radio Shack, let us know what do you guys think about that. That's crazy. Okay. Here we go. This is going to make your brain hurt. And I I I'm I I just I'm I'm going to read the title. And I want to see what you're going to say. <laughs> Kim Kardashian sued for promoting alleged cryptocurrency pump and dump yeah. scam. I seen this shit. I, I, I read this article and they tie in a couple other celebrities in the art, actual article too. I think they tied in Floyd Mayweather and a couple other things because um, basically what they were doing was getting paid to promote crypto coins that were literally just rug pulls and then people were buying into them for instance like floyd mayweather was wearing that the i don't remember what it was called something something with an e on his trunk ethereum ethereum max ethereum max that was, that was the shit yeah ethereum <laughs> max right so these celebrities would pump the shit out of it and then they would just get rug pulled and people lost a whole bunch of money on it so now they're getting sued because of it which good for them like okay so okay Let's be real. Well, I'm I'm no Kim Kardashian. I know I look good, but not like you know <laughs> on that kind of like supermodel level or whatever. The but next, <laughs> <laughs> if you carry a certain weight when you come to become an influencer, you do have a certain level of responsibility to vet the things that you promote, like a moral obligation. If you don't, then you're just a douchebag, and you don't deserve the following that you have maybe 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 i don't understand but from as far as i think anything that i'm gonna promote i hope that it's gonna be a good quality product something that maybe i tried myself or that i understand now it's hard to really know every company's end game but i don't know i don't know how i feel about this like i don't know like i think there would have to be an investigation that abound around was she aware that it was a scam was it a scam that you know these <laughs> these celebrities actually orchestrated themselves i don't know it according to this so you're right floyd May mayweather was part of it and so was paul pierce which yeah. is a famous basketball player with kim kardashian um so they are being sued because it was so this is allegedly they're saying this is allegedly earned the creators of the token large sums before they did a rug pull and this the the lawsuit is arguing that these celebrities were paid to promote the token and it seems like okay maybe they were unaware of it being a rug pull. However, the lawsuit is supposed to be that they they didn't know what this thing was for. They just said, hey, we're going to give you a lot of money if you promote us. Cool. They, you know, it, it's like if I came up with a competitor for, for Best Buy, for example. Oh, you know what? Even better, McDonald's. 
I, you know, McDonald's is a worldwide uh, fast food chain. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to open up my own fast food chain and it's going to be called this. And it's going to launch worldwide competing against directly McDonald's. I'm going to put myself on the blockchain or I'm going to put myself in the stock market. Boom, here it is. People start ramp. Well, I guess it wouldn't work on the, on the, with, with stocks, but it would work with crypto. If we're to do something like this and everyone's like, oh my gosh, this is going to be something good. They have, these people that are promoting it and everything and then they pull the rug without really knowing if i'm even doing anything with it yes you are a little bit and i'm going to call these three people stupid for doing that but at the same time even though you have this is oh this is where this market's going to man and i actually love it you are no longer because this is a decentralized thing you are no longer going to be free of being accountable for something for not knowing jack shit. Most of the time, you could get a celebrity to do a commercial and you're done and cool, I get paid, I'm out of here. Now, not no more. If you don't know what it is that you're promoting and it is like crypto is so big on this thing where we've seen pump and dumps, in the states, they're making that a felony. They're making that illegal to do a pump and dump scheme. And it's according to the IRS, taxes on that thing is not going to be pretty. So when these people, these celebrities are doing dumb shit like this to say, hey, yeah, let's let's go ahead and I'll help promote you. And then all of a sudden they get the rug pulled they're going to be held responsible to it because they're the ones that pushed it out there. And I'm actually glad because these people make stupid amount of money. And if they don't want to do the research like you and me do, where we're just like, Hey, Ethereum max, I, you know, this isn't coming from the Ethereum people. This isn't Ethereum 2.1, <laughs> you know, 2.0 is not even here. This isn't anything part of the Ethereum family. Even if it was a, I don't know if you want to call it like a copy paste, a fork. I don't know. The problem is, so, the, I mean, you can go full circle with it, right? So obviously they didn't know they just got paid and they promoted whatever they promoted, right? But the other problem is, is that why are you taking financial advice from Kim K or Mayweather? Exactly. So, so. Yes, these people have money, but they didn't make their money from this, right? Mm -hmm. They made some money, but they didn't make their fame and fortune from this. And people are so quick because of their short attention spans these days to try to find the next Dogecoin or Shiba Inu or, you know, like these next meme coins. And they just throw all their money in there now and they ended up, you know, get left holding the bag. And it's an unfortunate cycle that i see all the time you know I, I get the one random person that'd be like oh i love crypto because i made money off dogecoin and shiba well great that's great for you because you have some of the better um what's the word i'm looking for uh self-control than some other people might right the only way that you really make money off some of these meme coins is if you know your exit strategy you get in oh look i made a little bit of money i'm gonna get out now but if you left holding the bag, it could be a little while before it starts to go back up to where you bought it from. Some people are buying it at all time peaks. You imagine if you bought Dogecoin at, at 69 cents when it hit 69 cents, how long would you be waiting yeah. right now? Even with Elon Musk tweeting about Dogecoin being accepted on the Tesla marketplace, it still didn't go past 25 cents. Yep. So That's true. like you got to be careful with some of these coins and your investments and you don't just do something because somebody tells you, even when we make crypto content, we're like, do your own research, check this shit out. Like it's got to make sense to you. It's your money. And you know what? You've heard everyone else, everyone that's listening to us or watching us, you know, you always hear us say, this is not financial advice. And, um, you know, because it's it, the, like every time we do this with my videos on, on my crypto channel, I usually say this is for entertainment purposes. 
not financial advice. This is the stuff that I'm seeing. This is the stuff that I'm looking into. These are some of the apps you could use, some of the investments you can make. Do your own research, make your own decisions. Um, her Instagram, Kim Kardashian's Instagram, she posted the day before it crashed, are you guys into crypto? This is not financial advice, but sharing what my friends just told me about the Ethereum Max token. It went 632% overnight. And then it crashed. It was insane. Now, the thing that, you know, we're trying to like, we're again, we're trying to like educate people as much as we can. And, you know, of course, we're, you know, we've always say like, you know, just like her, she's just, she's a celebrity. She's a influencer. We're influencers, um, not at her level, but stuff like this, like this, this is why we pull stuff. And this is why a lot, like a lot of cryptos are starting to change nowadays and like where you can lock an address. So these assets can't be pulled out right underneath you. There's a lot of things that are starting to get into place within cryptocurrencies. And you just have to do your research. Like when, when a brand new crypto goes out there, is there some sort of lock protection that they can't just pull everything out or, or not? And if it's, and if it's like, you know what, anything could happen, then you're doing a lot of this stuff at your own risk. You just never know. Okay. What do you got? <laughs> Cuz I know that's that th th that one that one was like a piss I'm pissed what the hell Kim did but at the same but, time uh, I'm just like good luck. <laughs> people need to stop acting a fool too so Yeah, anyways, here's another what the hell. Here's a face for you. What's weird Al and <laughs> what weird Al Yankovic? Yankovic, I I right? Did I say that right? Yankovic. 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 Yankovic? Yankovic? No, it's Yankovic. Yeah, Yankovic. Yankovic, sorry. You called him a, a added an H. I'm sorry, my bad. <laughs> anyway, so it says Roku is making a Weird Al mockumentary starring Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> D Daniel, well, like one, how do you even try to play Weird Al? It's know. funny because I was saying Daniel Radcliffe should be the new Wolverine. <laughs> it's interesting, but but at the same time. He's got a little bit of flow to him. You ever heard him rap? Yeah. So Daniel Radcliffe, maybe add some hair onto him. We need some photo Photoshop people to add the weird Al hair to Daniel Radcliffe. It says it took it took more than a decade, but where Al is finally about to get a documentary, he has always deserved. Uh, you may recall back in 2010, Funny or Die released a trailer for Weird Al. I don't remember this. The clip promised yeah. an unflinching look at weird Al's life with performances from actors like Aaron Paul, Olivia Wilde, and Gary Cole. We're Olivia. not about to get that film sadly, apparently, but Roku may just give us the next best thing. Uh, the company announced today it's backing production of weird, the weird Al Yankovic Yankovic story. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Keep adding an H instead of Aaron Paul as Yankovic. We get Harry Potter, get Harry star, Potter, Radcliffe. You know what? I think okay, here, here's a good question for you. I think Daniel Radcliffe has proven he's not just Harry Potter, mm -hmm. right? I, I yeah, think absolutely. that he's he's gone far enough outside of that role and done enough content and created enough movies. That I don't think he should just be known as Harry Potter anymore. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about Daniel Radcliffe. I 100% <laughs> agree with you. I know there's people that have been telling me that I'm crazy to think <laughs> about <laughs> Harry Potter being Wolverine. <laughs> but you know what? Like those images that were floating around Google as him as Wolverine where he's all cut up they give him the hair everything Daniel Radcliffe is the right height for Wolverine 
And I know a lot of people are like, dude, Hugh Jackman was the best Wolverine. No, he wasn't. He was the only Wolverine that you got on the big screen and they made him look really good. But I could not stand Hugh Jackman as Wolverine because one, he was too damn tall. Two, they didn't give him a hunch how Wolverine was. Daniel Radcliffe is a hell of a lot shorter with facial hair and and everything that they can do with with his uh, with his hair his head hair they couldn't and if he gets ripped they could do a really good young wolverine and he is an amazing actor you guys you have to see like swiss army um you have to see what is that one with the racist one Uh, i think it was with the kkk one um Daniel Radcliffe has done so many movies outside of Harry Potter. And mm-hmm. there's, and like you said, there's there, he's starting to get noticed and he's starting to get like, like, Oh, he's not the Harry Potter guy. He's Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think if, if Marvel gave him that opportunity to be the five foot five, five foot six Wolverine, with a hunch and all that facial hair, all the makeup, whatever it is that you need to make him look like Wolverine, he could be your classic comic book style and true Wolverine. And I honestly think with his acting skills, he would be like, I I think people will not even realize that that is Harry Potter. They're going to be like, dude, this guy is awesome. Yeah, Guns of Kimbo was a good movie. I love Guns of Kimbo. I thought it was great. I heard that's a great one. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. I'm I'm I want to see what he's gonna what he's gonna do with Weird. Um I I've always listened to Weird Al Yankovic and his stuff, and it's it's always had me crack up. Um we are living in a very sensitive era where people have to be careful with what they say and what they don't say. I really hope they don't hold back and they show they they showed how Al was during that time, you know? You got something else? Maybe something small. But like we've talked about this before. Baby Shark goes over 10 billion views now. <laughs> billion I'm 10 there's what six billion people maybe seven on earth that means hypothetically not everybody has watched it right, but, but there's more views than there's people <laughs> it's insane this is absolutely insane like youtube is just it's going to the gutter now it's just people give their phones to their kids just to watch stuff like baby shark and then all of the adolescents are going to TikTok and Snapchat. And then us boomers, we don't have any content to watch anymore because they're not getting ranked in the algorithm. So where do we go? What do we do? Fighting for 10 billion views, views with Baby views. Shark <laughs> and, and, and a seven-year-old making 28 million off of decorating cupcakes that I'm not going to watch. But apparently, I'm not the person that YouTube's targeting their platform to anymore. <laughs> I'm just angry. I'm angry at this point. You're hangry. I'm hangry. It's, it's I got two one. o'clock and I haven't eaten yet. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's a what the hell. Okay, I'm going to give you one more. And this is to all my females out there who are <laughs> all my single ladies. <laughs> All my single ladies, all my single ladies. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. <laughs> so women who drive for Uber and Lyft are being left to fend for themselves. Now, I got to say, I got to say this for anybody out there listening, war there is a warning on this. This contains descriptions of some stuff that might not be I, that's probably going to be a little bit disturbing, but I'm going to try to censor or not. Well, there's nothing to really see, but more of I'm going to choose my words carefully. So this happened, of course, in the United States of the free world. <laughs> a 
a, a lady, a woman in Charleston, South Carolina, who's been driving for Uber for a couple years, found herself in a very awkward situation. So she picked up a guy. A few minutes later into the car ride, the guy exposed himself, took his pants down. So she stopped the car, kicked him out. I think she called the cops or something. And uh, she reported it to Uber. Uber said thank you for reporting this and is still allowing this person to use the app. Well, this How do you verify lady, that, though? Huh? How do you verify that, though? Like, who's reporting that? Because Uber's well, not going to come out and say, thanks for reporting it, but we're not canceling his account. Like, Uber wouldn't say that. You know what I mean? Uber wouldn't say that, but according to this, there's been other females that have picked this guy up in different, in future dates. Okay. And they're saying that they've actually interviewed over 25 female rideshare drivers across the country. And they're all experiencing the exact same thing. Passengers flirting with them, soliciting unwanted, you know, advances. Um, and these people that are doing it, they are found still using the app. They're still being picked up by other females. And now they are the females are actually talking to each other and saying, Hey, this is what's happening. Okay. Both so, companies right now. And this is, this is, this is where it's like, it, to me, this is a big old, what the hell? Why isn't Uber actually taking a stance on this thing? But because they're not, both companies are facing multiple lawsuits. And what this is, it's the lawsuit is alleged Uber and Lyft having to fail to protect them from these types of situations. Crazy. Crazy. So I can go further and further into this. It's pretty insane. I don't want to go too far into it. You guys pretty much get the drift on this, but I don't know what else to, I don't know. Just be careful out there. And this is not just women. Well, it's it's basically it's happening a lot to women, but it does happen to men also. And and, and here's the thing. Guys don't talk about this shit cuz it happens all the time. But guy like I'm not like guys don't come to like another guy in most situations and be like, "Yo, this dude was hitting on me and he exposed himself while I was driving Uber." Like that's not a conversation that is readily accessible or accessible or acceptable or or that's done frequently, I think, without mm -hmm. kind of judgment in society. Still, mm -hmm. I get we're 2022. Oh, it's a new year. <laughs> uh, but like I recently had a friend who drives from Uber tell me that this he, this guy's girlfriend called him an Uber and he went to pick him up. And the whole time he, the guy was trying to like take him into his apartment while he was driving him. And it was just a really awkward situation the whole time. And like, you know, thankfully, my friend has like cameras set up everywhere and like all kinds of shit. But like, you never know when somebody's going to F around and you're going to have to find out you got to just going to cross all your I's and dot all your T's or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I did watch a video on a, uh, it was a female that came into this guy's car and this, again, this does happen to males also. Um, sometimes it's a little bit different, but this female came in smoking and he was just like, whoa, 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 can't come in smoking. And she's like, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll roll down the window. And he was just like, nope, hell no, can't do that. Like, you need to get out. And she's just like, I'm going to call the cops that you, that you were attempting to rape me if you don't give me my ride. And it's just like, here's the thing. In 
in not not just today's society this is what's been happening to men for a very long time before we were born and i'm not saying this is what women do but this is a very common thing that women do if they don't get their way this is something that does happen to men where they say I'm calling the cops that you were attempting to rape me. They call the cops. The, the man gets arrested. They go to court. And then there's this whole sob story. And she's there with a banged up eye and everything. And saying that I got raped by this guy. The guy goes to jail for X amount of time. I have I was watching actually yesterday on uh, the A&E channel. It's called like court uh, court cam or court something where this guy got uh, arrested for life or put in jail for life for killing a baby to later find out that he didn't and the girl confessed that it was her. And this guy, I think, was like running, running. He was jogging or something down the street. Like he was just working out. He got arrested. And I think I want to say he was in jail for about oh, 20 years or 20 some years before they actually released him and said, sorry, my bad. And the and I was hearing the, the, the court hearing saying you are the lowest piece of scum that I've ever had to blah, blah, blah. And it's just and this guy was totally innocent. Mm -hmm. But see, this is the stuff that does happen that that with men. But. With now Uber, with today's technology, when I saw this video, this girl saying that she's going to do this, 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 he called the cops right away and she called the cops and she was trying to say, hey, this happened, this happened, this happened. They had her sitting down. They, they showed the cam of the cop. They had her sitting down on the on the, the sidewalk and they had the guy in the back seat in handcuffs. And they and the guy was telling him, look at my camera in the front hits hit hit play and you'll be able to see the last 10 minutes and the cop did that saw the video let him go and then arrested her and now she's i think that's a felony i think if you get caught like lying like that that's a felony now um dumb shit you know, and I, I feel I feel bad. I feel bad for the people out there who are extremely innocent. I feel bad for like this, like female Uber drivers dealing with this crap, you know. Be careful. Be extremely careful. And and I don't know about you next, but I, I've I've taken Uber lifts and whatever else that's out there. It's really easy now in today's day and age. When you buy something on Amazon, you could read people's reviews. When you go to order an Uber to pick you up or Uber Eats, like to deliver food, you could actually read reviews off of that people and see how many how many they actually have. Is this person a long time good person that's constantly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I look at them just to be safe. Usually the way the system works, though, is you don't have very much time before you call it and it arrives for you to really read the reviews because they're in your area already, right? Sometimes it, it depends. Sometimes I've 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 experienced where I've waited about 30 minutes to get picked up. Really? Yeah. Wow. And I've also experienced that I've waited five minutes. Like I put it in and then it says, oh, your Uber's on its way. Typically, when it says that and it says who's picking you up, it says their vehicle name, their I, their license plate, like all that stuff. I As soon as it pops up, I normally just go, bam, read it real quick. And then I just I skim through it real fast. I always filter negative stuff first so I could see when it was and how bad it was. And I do filter the, the most recent to see how recently it's been going on. But got to be safe, man. It's I don't know. But five minutes have, has been the fastest I've ever been picked up. 30 minutes has been the longest I've ever been. I've waited to get picked up. So 
hope you guys enjoyed this what the hell episode we ended up with a little bit serious there at the end but i hope you guys are enjoying it hope you guys are being safe out there as always leave us comments leave us a review anything that we've talked about you know we we, we love to hear from you guys and sometimes we don't know that you're out there listening that is the only way we know when you guys hit the thumbs up when you guys leave us a comment when you guys leave us a review when we see the amount of downloads or the amount of things that are being shared, that's when we know you're out there. So the more interaction that you guys do, um, the more it makes us better understand who's out there listening and give us some feedback. Let us know what you guys want. Um, if you guys are enjoying this, let us know that you're enjoying this episode. Even if you have no feedback, Hey, this one was great. Thank you. Um, we always appreciate you guys. Always, always, always stopping by next. What you got? You know what I always say, guys, thank you guys for your support coming out and watching the listening to watching and listening to the episode. Uh, if you are listening to us on the audio side, make sure that you leave us a review wherever you're listening to us so that people like yourself can find the content that you enjoy. Uh, please make sure that you check us out on the YouTube channel beyond the streams uh, Thursdays, uh, roughly around three to four p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do a live show, so make sure that you have your notifications turned on because you never know where the conversation is going to go. We usually bring on people as well, creators to CEOs of different companies. So if you're looking to find out more information about you know, the creators that you watch or the companies that you buy products from, make sure that you have those notifications turned on. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.